preaching today. We have a very special set of guests with us all the way from Israel, from the city of Tel Aviv. Would you welcome Sergey and Natasha to the stage? They were here last year. It's a pleasure to have you guys back. We're so excited to have you guys back. We met them two years ago when we were in Israel, and we just hit it off from the beginning. And they are doing great things in the city of Tel Aviv, reaching young people. Their church, believe it or not, is in a bomb shelter, as crazy as that might be. If you want to learn more about it, hear more about what they're doing to minister, they too will be over near the Next Step station after service. So hopefully we'll have a crowd. They'd love to tell you more about how you could be involved in helping them reach people in the city of Tel Aviv. And to help them do that, Journey Church, we got a gift for them for $5,000 to help continue on the work of the ministry that they have. We're honored to do that. We're excited to give you the stage. Have a great time bringing God's word today. Thank you so much. Wow, what a pleasure to be here. It's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your prayers and support. Our church actually really located in a bomb shelter. It's the safest place in Israel to go to church in case something happening. This is so cool. I, I'm so glad that I'm traveling with my amazing, beautiful, the only one, Natasha, my wife. We have... We have two boys, their names is Solomon and Moses, they even even better of our sides and I like to see them. I think I, I started to miss them a little bit over this trip and we have another member of our family and this is amazing, beautiful, awesome Sphinx zombie cat, her name is Esther and we really love, love to spend time with her as well and I just... I just wanted to share with you a few highlights we had last year in our church. And our church is growing and we have different things like leadership classes. We recently, with your help actually, started church online and this is growing. We have about 50, 60 people in our church, but online on Facebook we have over 500 viewers each uh, week, which is amazing. Most of it... Most of the people, they are from Tel Aviv, so they're watching us, local people, and we like to share our message online as well. And a year ago, we, we had a privilege to travel to our neighbor country, Jordan, and we were ministering to refugees. And actually, Natasha preached to 150 Muslim ladies, and this, is, this was amazing. But I, may I ask you, please don't tell anyone, because actually it's illegal to do in Jordan to preach gospel to Muslims. This is why this church, they called us Israeli pastors to do the, you know, bad job. No. And we, 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 was, uh, we were preaching to over 1,000 people uh, in different churches uh, as well, refugees, Christian refugees from Iraq, Syria. We're so glad to be a blessing for our neighbor country as well and just share gospel. And with all of this traveling last year, I got so many different invitations, especially in Europe, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, and next week I will go to Italy. Why am I sharing this thing with you? Not because I'm cool and, you know, fancy preacher, because my English is a first language. This is why I will do a lot of mistakes. So please laugh at me as hard as you can if I do mistakes. But all this traveling and all these things, they just make me tired, you know. It's so cool to see as your pastor maybe go here and there and you think, oh, I'm, I would love to have, to have this kind of life, but I'm telling you, it's tiring. It's really a really tough job to have all these, all these things. And, and um, just, just recently when we moved, when we were flying here to Boston, and not, we are not in Boston right now, I guess, yeah? But, but we, were, we, were, we, we had a first stop in Boston, and we were going from, from Tel Aviv to Barcelona. We stayed there for 12 hours, and then we, then we came to New York, and we had nine hours 
layover. And, and my wife, she said, what if we would go to the Times Square and make some selfies over there? And I, th I said, it's a good idea. Let's do it. We took a subway, came to, to, to Times Square, spent a nice time there. And then we, we were a little bit on, 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 a, on a time limitations. And we took a subway and go to the airport back. And our subway stop for 10 minutes with no reason, you know, with the open doors. And we were thinking, like, what's going on? I look at my watch, and I think probably we're going to use, uh, we're going to lose our flight. And I was just freaking out, you know. I, I, I got so mad on my wife, and I started almost screaming at her, and, and it was bad. So in front of all of these people, please forgive me. I was too tired to handle this situation. And so many times, my friends, we, with all these opportunities we have in our life, with all these, you know, different kind of business opportunities, family, and so on, we get tired. We, we, get, we have so much things to do with all this social media, even you, if you rest, you still scroll in your Facebook, you know? You still make your brain working hard. And I brought all the way from Tel Aviv the message about Shabbat for you. So let's open the scripture and look what Jesus promised to us. He says in Matthew 11, verse 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Jesus, he wants to give us rest. He wants us to learn how to rest because sometimes we're so tired that we even not able to receive what God promised to us. And I have a question for you. Did Jesus leave the same principle of rest in his life? Because his life seems too busy as well. If you remember, his ministry started so fast to grow and he got thousands of followers. And you remember these this moments when Jesus healed someone. He says, shh, please don't tell anyone that I am Messiah, that I am here. And probably the reason why, because he wanted to rest. He wanted to spend time with God. And I want to show you this in Luke chapter 5, verse 15, 16, and 17, it will be our, our passage for this morning. Look at this. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. So thousands of people, you know, followed Jesus or pursued him and just wanted, please heal me, please do something for me. So his opportunities, they were right there. So imagine for you, if you would start a business and re suddenly you would have thousands of customers coming to your business and buying and, and, and this is a not right time for rest. Am I right? It's time to work harder to catch all you have all these opportunities of your life. Jesus had been in the same situation. He had so many people around him, and he had only three and a half years to save planet Earth, to save all of us. So I, if I would be on his place, probably I would say, oh, it's only three and a half years. I have to work hard every single day. But look, next verse, uh, verse 16, it says, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. I bet that was so many things, so many times when, when they had a conference with the disciples and, and you know, in, in the middle of, of, of everything, suddenly the disciples were like, oh, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Now we're going to finish it all. Because Jesus probably is resting somewhere because Jesus withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So first thought for you, Jesus often rested. I have a question for you. Do you have on your schedule time to rest? Do you have on your schedule time to rest? When you open your smartphone and you have all this calendar, who, who uses calendar in your smartphone? And it's booked and you have thousands of meetings and everything. 
do you have something in between this, you know, green or whatever thing which says, I will rest this few hours. I will take a nap. Probably not in the work, but a little after. I will, I will have my time to rest, you know? You know that vacation are not for rest. Vacation to create our memories. And sometimes we think if we put all our tiredness into the one vacation a year or two vacations in a year, we can, you know, cover it all. But truth is that after vacation, you have to have what? Rest. Because it's too tiring. So we need to learn something about rest. Because God, he prepared this rest for us. He's ready to give us this rest. But our job is to enter this rest and learn how to spend time with Jesus. So Shabbat, by God himself, was invaded for us to have rest. Shabbats are for rest. And I brought this hammock for you with a reason. Because I believe that God called me a year ago to learn something about rest. With all these, you know, things we have in our ministry, with all these invitations, I got so tired, I thought I would have a burnout. And God says, I command you to do something. Next Shabbat, you know, in Israel we have Shabbat, this Saturday. I ask you to move your services from Saturday, because we had this on Saturday, to Friday night, and I want you and the whole church Rest, And he says, I ask you to buy a hammock, put it in your, in, in your home, hang it on, and do something for me. And I said, what do you want to do? He says, in the morning when you will wake up, go to this thing. Can I try? Okay. <laughs> go to hammock, lay on it. I said, okay, it's not a big deal, you know, for me. Just I'll try. And I, I have my smartphone and I started you know doing Instagram Facebook some games and and maybe uh, reading Bible and figure it out the next message thing and he says no 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 I ask you to rest so take off this thing put it on a air air mode do you have this air mode in your phone how this is another question how often you put your iPhone on air mode so God says, do it. I'm like, okay, I'll try. And I'm just laying in the hammock for five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. And I'm like, okay, I, I got to do something. It's, it's torturing me. I, it's impossible for me to lay in the hammock for an hour or two. But he says, I want you to do this rest exercise. Like you go to gym, you know, I'm a runner. I do run full marathon every year. Like you go and you prepare yourself to marathon, you have to prepare yourself on this hammock to receive something from me because I prepared for you the rest. And a year ago, I started to do this hammock rest exercise. Because sometimes we think, oh, I have summer break. I have this time for the vacation. I will cover all my tiredness or need. But truth is, you have to learn how to rest when you're on a journey. Do you remember Jacob? When he was on a journey, he slept and during the night God came to him and showed him this letter to heaven. And he, he had an encounter with God in a dream and so on. So when you will lay, out, lay on your hammock, don't have a guilt as usually we do if you, do, if you will do it especially not on a, on a weekend and maybe during the week, you will have a nap and you will have this guilt like, oh, you, you miss so much calls and SMS and emails. And, but truth is that God will take care of it. God will take care of it. He will give you enough power to be effective next day and answer it all. So I really recommend you Shut this thing down for a couple of hours, maybe a day, and at least for one day a week for Shabbat. By choosing Shabbat, listen carefully, we are pro protesting 
and rebelling against our desire to trust and worship ourselves. When you choose this one day a week which God created for us, you choose to worship Him and not worship yourself. Because you're saying, okay, if I will shut this thing down and I will not answer an email and all of these things, something will go wrong with, with my customers. And some of you who, who is mother, you think, oh, if I will not cook on Sunday, everyone will starve and die and all of these things. It's okay. McDonald's is still over there. It's okay. Once in a week. I know you hate McDonald's, but still, you got the idea. Luz, uh, uh, look at this. Shabbat, in Hebrew, it means shvita. It literally means protest. You say, I'm protesting to work. I'm protesting to do my routine, whatever routine your routine is, looks like. I'm protesting to do that on the day when God wants to give me rest. So he, Jesus, he often rested. Jesus, number two, he rested alone. And for this point, I want to call my beautiful, amazing wife on a stage because she's professional in being alone and spending time with God. So give her a big hand. I am a very emotional person. At least I met Mary Jo. <laughs> now I don't think so anymore. <laughs> so I'm a very emotional person. And I call myself, I am the atmosphere. When I enter the room, I fill the room with myself. When I smile, everyone is smile. When I'm sad, everyone hide. So can you imagine life in my family? If I'm not happy, all my boys, they are scared. True story. <laughs> insecure and hiding. Because if mama, she is mad, I have a killing look. You know? Mamas, do, we, do you have a killing look? That you can, you can, you know, you can look this way that your boys understand we need to change something now. <laughs> or mama kill us. <laughs> so for me, very hard be all the time in the balance. I have very, very highs with emotions and very, very deep, deep lows with emotions that can draw me to the depression and apathy, you know, bad stuff. And the high stuff can draw me to the heaven. Then I can enjoy my life. So, we as a human being, we have a function, reflect emotions. We can, and we do, we reflect emotions of each other. If I'm smiling to you, and I say, hey, how are you doing? You doing good? Your life is good. My life is perfect. I hope maybe tomorrow your life would be great. And you smiling. Even though you had a very bad day, you start smiling because I smiling you. This is reflection. If I will come to you and I said, oh, you know, my love is bad. Everything is bad. I had bad situation. I moved from my homeland Leave my family alone. Now boys and I'm alone with my husband. Don't know anyone. Don't have friends. Anyone. The money situation. Everything is bad. So all you feel sad about me, right? So you reflect my emotions. Because we, like this miracle. Oh, sorry, miracle. Mirror. This is my first, first language too. So be mercy on me, okay? We like this mirror. And I can say more, Jesus himself reflect emotions. Because this is our function. This is what we, how we live. This is what we do. So we reflect people and emotions what is around us. Whatever is in the miracle, in the 
I don't know, I just want to call it miracle, okay? <laughs> Wherever in the mirror, we reflect it. So to Jesus, people came with a huge bunch of problems. He didn't perform. He healed people. He helped people. And it wasn't, it wasn't healthy people. That Jesus said, I came like a doctor to those who are sick, not to those who is okay. So it was a bunch of people, crowds of people with the problems. And they came to him and say, I have these problems. I, ha I need healing. I need marriage healing. I need, I don't know, my love is mess. Help me. Jesus, you are my last hope. So it was important for him to cut from the people and be alone. In John 11, 33, we know the story about Lazarus. When Jesus came and he knew he will raise him up, he will be alive. He would be alive in a couple more minutes. But when Mary with the Jews, they weeping, they weeping so hard. It was such a sad situation. So Jesus felt troubled. He was upset. He started crying too in a different translation said. He started crying too. Why? Why? He knew Lazarus would be okay. But because he feel what they felt. He reflect the emotions, the feelings. It's really taught him very deeply. So when we have this, we need to be alone. And this is very important. When I had my firstborn son, he's the sweetest boy ever. When we were the people. <laughs> but when we alone, he just drove me crazy. <laughs> he won my attention 100%, 24 hours, 24 hours, seven days in a week. And it drove me crazy. I couldn't make it. He, I breastfeeding, I couldn't lift him. I couldn't say, okay, here's the baby, good luck. I have a day off. I couldn't make it. Because every two hours I should breastfeeding him. So what I did, because I overwhelmed with my emotions, and he didn't smile and he didn't cheer me up, like, yeah, mom, you can do it. <laughs> No, he was crying. The stomach was bothered him. He was crying. He was irritated. He didn't like it this way. He didn't like this way. He didn't like only this way. <laughs> and that's it. So what I did, I put him in a sleep. He slept for two hours. And I just left him with the father during his sleep because both of them, when he's wake up, didn't work. So I ran away from the house. And I had my two hours per day alone with God. Because I was needed to cut these emotions. And I needed to have God's emotions in my life. I needed... To split. I was really needed because it was too much for me. When they grow up, I have two boys, three boys with this amazing boy. <laughs> so now I put them in a the bed, all of the three of them, pray, kiss, hug. They sleep and I go running. True. And sometimes it took me more than three hours. Because if I'm very tired, if I'm exhausted, the day was bad, the people came to me and they give me their problems, and I'm not Jesus. I cannot filter it. I need to give away. I need to separate myself from this, and I need to be alone with my God. And I need His emotions in my life back. Because when I come back, 
I need to be happy again. I need to smile because I am the atmosphere at home. I am the atmosphere in the church. And I don't want to kill people with my look <laughs> that they never come back. Because they try once to find Jesus, but they find my look. <laughs> so now we do it with the family. We just, in Shabbat, my, my boys said 9 and 11, they, I call them adult. So we can, they can have their own time with God. So we split in the rooms. And they have half an hour, they can read Bible, they can listen Bible, they can be in the silence, they can worship God, wherever they want to do. Just they own have they own, they own time with Jesus for half an hour. And then we come to the table and we just share what the, what the relation we have, how we will use it next week. And then we have time with family and with God and we continue to talk. Sometimes we're just quiet because we need it. We need this, use this principle because God already prepared it. But we just don't take it because we're too busy. And the rest not coming, it's not falling on our head. Because I had the babies in the church and, and I didn't have grandmas around me who helps me with that. I need to put I needed to put this time in a priority, that I need this rest to be healthy, to serving people, that it's not overwhelm me and I can handle it, but that I can always smile. I can always help people. I can always support my husband and say, you are my hero. You can do it. And not just, oh, come on. <laughs> or another version, just don't touch me. Just do whatever you want. Just don't touch me. I need my space. This is not working. This is how we're living, but it's not working. And it's not bringing blessing into our families, into our jobs, into our people who surround us in a church. So what I really want to encourage you, put this rest, be alone in a priority. Find this. It's not falling. We need to fight for this rest. We need to fight that we can reflect not people's emotions, but God's emotions. Amen. I love it. <clears throat> Look what, what Hebrews says in, in chapter 4, verse 9 and 11. So there is a special Shabbat rest still waiting for the people of God. So let us do our best to enter that rest. Let's say it together. Do our best to enter that rest. This is our job, my friends. To take this time and find this time and do our best to find this Shabbat on a week. Maybe Sunday it's too busy. If, if, if you're ministering, then probably Sunday it's not the right day for you. But if you only go to the church or come to the church on Sunday, I would prefer, prefer to do it on Sunday because you're already here. You, maybe it would be a, your next step to make this decision. Because you are here, you get some revelation. If you're hard with that, then Pastor Eric would work hard on you and, and push some revelations into your life. And you, you get something. And what if you would go home, you have a nice light lunch and spend time with God and, and have this devotional time and just reflect on the message you got here. And maybe you take, you take one hour or 30 minutes or two hours, depends on how busy you are on Sundays, and you go have a nice walk. You just talk to God, spend time with Him. I think this is, will change your life. I'm not just thinking about I believe that it will change your life. God believed so. This is why he put this prescription for us in Ten Commandments. He says, 
Make this time holy. Make holy Shabbat. What does it mean? Holy in Hebrew means it's make it separate. Like you, you say, oh, I put it aside. This is not mine. This is yours. And I will not touch it. You know, we, we hate alcoholism in Israel. We hate all these drug-addicted things, and we believe it's destroying families. But what about workaholism? I bet the same amount of family was destroyed because of some workaholist in their family. When father couldn't find the time to spend time with his teenage kids, and family couldn't, couldn't find the time to spend on their own and just have nice good relationships. So I truly believe that we need to spend time with God on, alone. So Jesus, he often rested, not just once a year, okay? Not just once a year, my friends, often, which means at least once a week on Shabbat day. For you, it could be Sunday, Monday, wherever you can choose for yourself. Number two, Jesus, he rested alone. He found his time to spend time alone with God. Number three, Jesus, he rested in prayer. Jesus, he rested in prayer. Let's come back to this Luke chapter 5, verse 17. So you remember, Jesus, he was overwhelmed by, by people. Lots of people, crowds of people followed him. Then he often withdrew to the lonely places and prayed. And look what happened in verse 17. One day, while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law were sitting nearby. So what's happened? People were still waiting for him. Sometimes we think if we would put this thing on the air mode floor, uh, uh, air mode, whatever, <laughs> something bad will happen. I would, I would miss a very important call. Or if you would not scroll Facebook all day long, you think I would miss this like from this person or whatever. The opportunities will still waiting for, him, for you. Like for Jesus. He was going for a while. He came back and people, they were there. They were waiting for him. These opportunities will still waiting for you. Business opportunities, ministry opportunities. Please, I beg you, take time for rest. And what will happen? And the Lord's, look at this in, in, in the end of uh, verse 17. The Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Because he, he spent time with God. He spent time in prayer. And he was effective while ministering to other people. Because he had this power to heal other people. You think if you would be over busy and trying to catch all opportunities, do this and that, you will be effective probably for a while. But you need these breaks during your week. Well, you will have time, good quality time with God. And in Israel, we have, we have a tradition. On Shabbat, we take this cup and we, we call this cup uh, kiddush cup, which means to make holy something. And we believe when we pour wine into this cup, we make holy all the rest of our week because we dedicated Shabbat to God. And usually when we fill this cup, it's always with the overflow because we believe that we need to live out of overflowing cup and not out of empty cup. When you're tired, when, we, when you're over busy and you don't have time for yourself, maybe, maybe you need just to have a sleep. <laughs> Someone after first, first service came to me and he says, I will go have a nap right now after this service. I think this is a good thing to do for some of us. Maybe you need physical rest. Maybe you need to rest for your soul. Maybe you need spiritual rest. Please. Fill this cup full enough. And we would fill this cup, pray a certain prayer, but make sure it's full. Because you, you need to have a blessing for the rest of your week. You need this anointing. And when we raise this cap, we would pray for it. And we all know that this will make our next week holy. 
And as the believers, we, we know that only Jesus, He can make our weak holy. Only He can make our, our sins washed away. And then we would take this cup and, and it, you know, represent that all the rest of the week will have a blessing. Because you, you spend enough time with God on Shabbat. You take this Sunday and you will have best hours with your Lord Jesus. And what would happen? You will have enough time and power and strength and Holy Spirit for the next day, for your Monday. Look at this. You will have enough for Tuesday. You will have enough even for Wednesdays when, when we have small groups. You know, we're smart as a pastors. We created small groups for some people who need to have this, you know, extra revelation, extra push. But guess what? If you will spend enough time with God on Sunday, on Wednesday, when you will go to the small group, you will be ready to give it to someone else. You will share your revelations. You will say, oh, I have... I had some I, I had some good revelation I want to share with you. I want to pray for your problems. I want to bless your life. Thursday, it's a worship rehearsal, wherever in the church you have. You're, you, you're working. Friday, you still have power. You still have enough even on Saturday. And then, when you come next time on Sunday, you will still have enough to be a blessing for someone. You'll stop going to church just to receive, but you'll go to church to give because you're full enough. You spend enough time on your day off, on your Saturday or Shabbat, Sunday for you. And then even next week, you'll still have enough. You will still have enough to share with someone Maybe on your work, who doesn't know Jesus, you would say, oh, come on, I can, I, I can pray for you. I still have extra power for you, my friend. I still have this Holy Spirit in my heart. So I truly believe it's, it's the right principle to do. And it's about one day in a week when you can decide. You remember that? Do your best to enter it this rest so make yourself rest this Sunday make this decision this Sunday will become Shabbat for me I will spend time with my God when we come to church we hear the prince of tithing and offering that we trust 10 percent 10 percent to Jesus to God and God bless the 90 Shabbat, God put it in the Ten Commandments. So it is so important that we can trust this one day and He will bless the six others. Amen. And I, I have a feeling that some of you who came here today, you're really tired physically, emotionally, spiritually, and I believe when we will have this short praying, prayer, Holy Spirit will fill your cup again. But I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage you or I even begging you, please make this decision today that my Sundays will be Shabbats for me. I will go home. I will spend my time with God. I will stop doing, you know, my routine on, on this particular day you choose to spend time with God. And I believe that your life will be changed. I believe that this anxiety and tiredness and everything, maybe it will take a while. I don't promise you immediate, you know, feel, feel, feel good kind of thing. But I truly believe that Holy Spirit and Jesus, He want to give you this rest right now, today. Heavenly Father, we ask you right now for forgiveness that we, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't know that. We didn't choose this one day a week. We didn't make this thing 
true like we, we, we need to do. We didn't rest enough. We didn't spend time with you enough. So right now, we ask you that you will fill us with your presence, that you will fill us with your anointing, that our cup will be overflowing cup, that our life will become like a river, which flowing and flowing with the blessings and anointing to our family, to our co-workers, to our ministry and job and businesses, wherever we are. Holy Spirit, I trust you right now, all these people who need rest. I ask you that you will touch, touch them right now, that you will change their life, that you will take this anxiety and this tiredness and give them your rest. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for bringing forth a great word. I pray, Journey Church, that you would apply that during the course of the week. If you'd like to learn more about them and their ministry, please stop by and say hello to them before you go. Thank you for being here today. God bless you. Enjoy your week.